Look at that, Vanessa, ça. all the way from Kenya. Vanessa, qui me vient du Kenya. And he, look at that. I see some. I see a Swiss face that I love. Je look vois une Suissesse. Mm -hmm. Why don't you put on your cameras, folks? As you mettez, come. mettez vos vidéos, les amis. Mettez vos vidéos. See you. Afin que je puisse vous voir. Look at that. Look. Regarde-moi ça, regarde-moi ça. Man, I miss you guys. Ah, vous me manquez, les amis. I love all of you so much. Je vous aime tellement. What a family God has given us. Quelle belle famille Dieu nous a donné. Please, please, if you can, put your cameras. S'il vous plaît, si vous pouvez, mettez vos caméras. Mm -hmm. A lot of French names so far. Yannick, mm. are you sitting in a military bunker somewhere following us? Yannick, est-ce que tu nous suis depuis un bunker militaire? Unmute quick, Yannick. I want to know where you are at. Yannick, je veux savoir où tu es. Look at that. Andy, the hooting a house. I love that one. The hooting a house. Ça fait plaisir de vous voir. It's a legendary place in Stockholm. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. We will soon begin. On va bientôt commencer. Come in here. Yeah. We have another four minutes. On a encore quatre minutes. Yeah. Oli, how are you? Amir is there too. Look at that. Amir, how are you? Amir, Do Est-ce que les francophones, vous m'entendez? Awesome, it's growing by the minute. We okay. have plus plus 34 devices connected to us right now. Awesome. And it's growing by the minute here. It's wonderful, wonderful. The whole global family is gathering. Look at that Samuel, all the way from Kilgoris, mm -hmm. Kenya, just showed up. Yeah, maybe Timothy. Maybe call. Bin ich froh. Ha? Wir sehen uns ja bald, gell? In nur ein paar Tagen. In zwei Tagen bin ich bei dir, lieber. Und, und die, die hübsche Manu. <lacht> ja. die, die schönste. Ja, die schönste. Well, 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 she is very beautiful, but I gotta, I, I, I gotta protect my wife and my honor. <lacht> but she is definitely the, the Swiss best looking model. <laughs> All right, let me see. People are joining in. Wonderful, wonderful. I see devices joining in from Africa, from Switzerland, from France. This is awesome. All over Stockholm, Malmö, this is amazing. Devices from Westeros, Gothenburg. This is this is fantastic. Look hey, at this. Hey Marjo, it's not letting us uh, have. Look at that. For some reason, is there like anywhere you can accept it? Anna, all the way from Gothenburg. Good to see you. All right. Would you like to get in here to start it up? Or, yeah. Mm? Um, I will let Eaton come in and give you a little bit of an info before we jumpstart this. Yes. Guys, we're so excited all of you are here tonight for another Bible study with Johannes. We got an awesome hour ahead of us with uh, circumcised hearts and ears tonight. 
core value of, of SOS here. We're gonna send the notes so you can follow along in the chat here in just a minute or two. And uh, there's a lot of Bible verses. We have them all here gathered in one place. You know how Johannes likes it. It's gonna be awesome. So Johannes is gonna start here. And uh, thanks for joining along, guys. Let's do this. All right, guys. This is our second part of three. Uh, we call it DNA, where we share about what SOS is all about. In the first one, we talked about discipleship making. And today we're going to zoom in on what I think is the most important for all of us. We have a helper called the Holy Spirit. And if we follow him, he is so good. Zed. And he wants to help all of you guys. He is such a precious, wonderful part of our lives with God. Can everyone hear me? So, I've um, just taught this to 5,000 pastors in Nairobi, Kenya, actually, coming straight back from Kenya. And I was invited to teach the Assembly of God lead pastors there. Great privilege, such a grace. I did three national television programs for KTN and NTV, was invited to address the nation. Uh, so God is doing amazing things for us, opening up amazing doors for us. We are so touched. And um, well, then I went to Kilgoris. I, I can see there are some of our students with us. Uh, uh, the students in Kilgoris, they're going to have a little bit of a repetition. They have a long version of this teaching. But I have a title tonight that I've called Circumcised Hearts and Ears. And the title is coming straight off of the cry of Stephen in the book of Acts, the first Christian martyr. And I'm going to read to you as an introduction from Acts 7 and verse 51. You stiff-necked people, Stephen said, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. And you always resist the Holy Spirit. And I want to start out saying we don't want to be like the Pharisees in Jerusalem. We want to be people with soft hearts, open hearts, circumcised hearts, and circumcised ears. So that we always can be sensitive to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to go through 10 points with you uh, about how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I want to start off reading now after the book of Acts from Romans, the epistle to the Romans by Apostle Paul, chapter 8, verse 14 to 16. Paul says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Papa, Father. And the Spirit, with a big S, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirits that we are God's children. If we look into the, to the original Greek here in this text, actually it says, like a wind blowing in your sails, a gently pushing wind. That, that, that pushes the boat forward. So it is to be led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, I love this particular verses because they speak about who are the children of God. Well, there are many people that believe in God, many people that acknowledge the gospel, but actually Paul says here that we are the children of God when we are led by the Spirit of God. Um, and, and we don't have received a, a, a spirit that make us slaves to fear, but we have an Appa spirit, a Papa spirit. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And um, so with that little introduction, and also when I prayed this afternoon, I felt the Holy Spirit was whispering to me. And I wanted to say that to all of you participants today. He is so good, our helper. And he wants to help you. Remember that. You are not alone in this. He wants to help you. He wants to whisper in your ear and help you. Isn't that wonderful? Can we lift up our hands and just thank God for that? And just pray a short prayer. Father, we thank you that you sent a Jesus and made it possible for us to receive forgiveness of sins and also 
the Holy Spirit to abide inside of us. Father, now we ask you from all of our hearts that the Holy Spirit would fill every room, every device, every place where we are sitting with our Bibles. May you whisper to us tonight and in your goodness lead us into our future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, my first point tonight is listen to your heart. All right. Écoute ton cœur. Um, it says, actually, uh, every time the Bible speaks about heart, you could make an equal sign and write spirit with a little s. You know, we are spirit beings. So, when the Bible speaks about heart, it also speaks about our spirits. The real you. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Bible teacher Kenneth Hagin said, I love that way of describing the human being. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And listening to your heart is being sensitive to your human spirits. You have not even come to the Holy Spirit yet, but we are all spirit beings. And in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27, We read like this. It's the perfect description of what the human spirit is. It says, the human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one, on one, most, uh, on one in most being. We could uh, say it in modern day language that your spirit, the real you, is a flashlight in a dark room that guides you. So God has put inside of you something with very, very much intuition. Um, and Watchman Nee, the, the Chinese Bible teacher, he said that the human spirit consists of three components, intuition, conscience, and fellowship with God. And if we learn to develop these three things, we would become very sensitive to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit communicates with us through our spirits, not through our head, in our soul, but through our spirits. In Romans 8, verse 1 and 2, Paul says, therefore that there is now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So there is no condemnation when we live by our spirits and when we are in Christ Jesus. And also when it continues here, it says that What, what was impossible for the law to achieve in us, the Holy Spirit did. Isn't that wonderful? So the Holy Spirit works out God's counsel in our lives. Uh, in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 10, we read like this. Can you hear me now? Or is everyone... Whoever believes in the Son of God has his testimony in his heart. Whoever believes in the Son of God, and you can see it's not really the same in the scripture that you got in the chat, but this is from a more literal translation of the Greek. Whoever believes in the Son of God has his testimony in his heart. And whoever does not believe in God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed in the testimony God has given about his Son. So we talk about no soul salvation. We know in our spirits, by our intuition, by our conscience, that we have fellowship with God and that our spirits have been born again. Not by our soul, not by our bodies. We don't feel God. We sense God in our spirits. It's a huge difference. So listen to your heart. When people tell you, I don't know the voice of God. I, I, I've never heard the Holy Spirit. That's just a lie. That's just nonsense. It's so easy to hear God. If you listen to that green, red light, You know, sometimes it says, go ahead. Sometimes it says, stop. There's a little bus on our inside, and that's your spirit. We are sensitive as human beings. We were, we were created in God's likeness, and it should be the most natural thing for us to follow God. And long before we hear his voice, we can hear, the, you know, that bus in our spirit, that, that, that little, um, you know, pre-notion in our spirit. Okay, we go straight from there to our point number two. And our point number two is don't make him. And now we come to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Don't make him sad. Keep intimacy and watch over your covenant. God came 
instituted a brand new covenant with us through Jesus Christ uh, that bases on better promises. And uh, we receive the Holy Spirit uh, in our spirits. The Holy Spirit gave birth to our spirits. Uh, our spirits were born again, John's Gospel, chapter 3. And I always like to quote Ephesians 4 and verse 30 when I speak about this point. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Or in modern day English, do not make the Holy Spirit sad. Because with whom the Holy Spirit, you were sealed for the day of redemption. This is what we received uh, to guide us through this journey here on earth until we reach heaven. Uh, I always say that I'm in a covenant with my wife, with my beautiful Maria. And as you guys know, uh, she's married to me even on a bad day. <laughs> even if we had an upsetting conversation in the morning, I was not nice to her. She might not have responded nicely. Uh, she went off to work. I went off to do my things. She doesn't break covenant with me or leaves me just because she's sad. Uh, she might be a little more quiet. I'm, I, I, I probably won't receive uh, 10 text messages with heart emojis and kisses that day. Uh, but in the evening, if we, if we come together, we ask each other for forgiveness. Intimacy is restored, right? And I think it's the same with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to you to live in you. And he doesn't leave you. He's not a homeless person that runs out of you. Uh, every time you sin or, or you break, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, you don't live up to the standard, you sin. No, he just becomes sad. He just becomes quiet. And you can restore intimacy again with him by asking for forgiveness, having the Lord's communion and come into a sweet and beautiful presence with the Holy Spirit. So keep both your spirit, your heart pure. Um, Proverbs says, Chapter 4, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart. This, this is Solomon. Above all else, guard your heart, because it is the wellspring of life. And, and um, when we keep our spirit sensitive and we try not to make the Holy Spirit sad, then uh, it happens. Then we can be sweet followers of the Holy Spirit. Maju, is there something... Uh, that is off with translation right now uh, or yes no. translation is not working in french okay. so we're trying to fix it but i will send your notes in french to everybody all right awesome awesome all right guys so we've talked about number one listen to your heart which is the human spirit number two don't make him sad keep that intimacy i remember as a new believer how important that was to me i had to shut up the television when I felt a red light in my spirit, uh, I cannot watch this. When I was reading a newspaper, there were some columns I couldn't read anymore because the Holy Spirit would react. There were some things and some jokes I couldn't tell anymore because the Holy Spirit would react. And the more sensitive I was to always keep intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the more and the louder he started to lead me. So I would like to say that to all of you guys. Keep intimacy, watch over your covenant. So, uh, and always ask him for forgiveness and always stay close to him so that you can be led by his precious Holy Spirit at all times. Number three, once we've moved on from these introductions, God will start to use his picture book for beginners. I don't know, uh, you that have little children, when I started reading books to my kids, I didn't start with Moby Dick or, you know, uh, with a lot of text. <laughs> I started with the picture books. This is a cow. What does the cow say? This is a dog. What does the dog say? And in the beginning, there was just pictures. And then there was a little text under the pictures. And then it grew. And after a while, we took away the pictures. And we just read, uh, you know, books with a lot of texts. And that's how we grow. And I would say that in the beginning stages of following the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will will flood us with pictures. And we read in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, uh, verse 6 to 8, when Moses, Aaron, and Miriam is led out to the tabernacle uh, to have something tested by God. 
You see, Moses had married a Cushite woman. And uh, that was against the law that he had received on Mount Sinai. And now Miriam and Aaron was uh, criticizing him for this. You see, you can be right in criticism, but wrong in spirit. And uh, when they come out there, God starts to speak to them all. And he says, from verse 6, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He's faithful in all my house. And with him, I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And you can see in this text that the beginner's language of God through prophets, you know, during those days in the old covenant, God revealed himself through an oracle. He spoke to his people through someone that he had chosen, that he had anointed. Today he speaks to all of us because we are all temples of the Holy Spirit. But he says, I reveal myself to them in visions and I speak to them in dreams. But with Moses, that's not the case. No, no, no. He has moved on. He's, he's moved up a level. And to him, I speak face to face. And he sees me and, 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 and so on. So you can see that there is a development here. In Joel 2, uh, prophet Joel, we read a very familiar scripture about the end time and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we experienced in the book of Acts chapter 2. And Joel says like this, Chapter 2, verse 28, 29. Afterwards, I will pour out of my spirit on all people. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. And your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. And even on my servant, both men and women, I will pour out of my spirit in those days. So here we can see again that in the last days, the days we are in, the church era, the Holy Spirit era, would be an era of visions and dreams. God will drop a preview. He will drop a little movie inside of our spirits. He will show us something. I remember when this came to my life, I saw the car I was going to buy. I saw the apartments we were going to rent. And I was guided by God in these ways so much so that my wife started saying, have you seen the car? Have you seen the apartment? Because if you haven't, we are not going to buy it or rent uh, because she trusted um, uh, the visions and the pictures and the previews that I received so much. And I'd like to say to all of you right now that the Holy Spirit wants to flood your spirit with visions, with dreams, with pictures. That's the picture book for the beginners. That's how we start to walk with God. In Acts, in Acts the first history book of the early church, chapter 16, we read like this. From verse 9, during the night, Apostle Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia, standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So here we can see that during a time of Apostle Paul's missions journeys, they were confused. They were hindered by the Holy Spirit in some areas. God shut some doors. And, and then they spent the night in prayer and Paul received a vision of a European man. So some of us should be very happy that Paul went to preach the gospel in Europe. Come on, somebody. He left Asia, went into Europe, and we received the gospel. So here you can see that God has a picture book for beginners, which is visions, dreams, and so on. But then he wants to move on. I remember after a while, the visions and the dreams started to cease in my life. They didn't come. First, I was panic-stricken. I thought, God, why aren't you speaking to me anymore? But it was not like that. He wanted to move on with me. He wanted to take me to the next level. And that's where we come to point number four, which is the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're not talking about the voice of your spirit anymore, your heart. We're talking about the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's a very alterative voice, a very clear voice. When people say to you all the time, the Holy Spirit said to me, the Holy Spirit said to me, you should be um, a little suspicious. <laughs> because when the Holy Spirit speaks, you can build something on that. You can build a life calling on that. You can found a whole church on that. 
So don't listen to people that just throw around all the time that God is speaking to them. Uh, because when the Holy Spirit speaks, it is very clear. And, and, and it's very firm. And we know that he has spoken. In 1 Samuel in the Old Testament, I'm, jump back, I'm, I'm jumping here back and forth between uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament, even though we are New Covenant people, all of us. We need to have that in mind. Uh, and New Covenant people mean that we, we base our faith on grace, right? On the finished work of Jesus. And we all know that we have the Holy Spirit. But the voice of the Holy Spirit... Um, and I always says that fast obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit seems to crank up the volume, right? When we don't hesitate, he cranks up the volume. The, the faster we obey, the clearer we hear. And when every time we are fast to obey, the signals and the voice of the Holy Spirit is getting stronger and stronger and stronger in our lives. And when we disobey, he cranks down the volume, it seems like. So be a fast obeyer and you will have a very sensitive ear and a very circumcised ear to the Holy Spirit. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we read like this. The Lord called Samuel. And Samuel answered, here I am. And then he ran to Eli. Well, what is this? Well, young prophet Samuel is serving under the priest Eli and he hears the Lord, but he doesn't recognize the voice of the Lord. <laughs> it's just, just like that for us too. When we start to hear the Holy Spirit, we might not be sure, but after a while, we get to know his voice, right? And, and, and we get in to a very, very familiar uh, uh, leading of the Holy Spirit. So three times, Samuel, young Samuel, as a boy in the temple, ran to the priest Eli and said, here I am, you called for me. And um, then finally, Eli, the priest, Got it. He catched it. He said, hey, it might be the Lord calling you. And the next time he speaks, you got to tell him, you got to tell him like this. Here I am. <laughs> and speak for your servant is listening. And I love this scripture so much. And I'd like all of you to say that out loud in front of the screens right now. Can we do that? Lift your hands and say, speak for your servant is is listening. Isn't that what we want in SOS? We want to be Holy Spirit led and we want to say, speak to me. Your servant is listening. So, um, and then Samuel became an amazing prophet. In the book of Acts chapter eight, we read about Philip, the deacon, that because of persecution came to Samaria, became an evangelist there, casted out demons, healed the sick, baptized men and women, and, and, and helped a bunch of people to the Lord. But then an angel showed up to him, told him to leave that awesome revival and that outpouring that he saw in Samaria and go down towards the Mediterranean Sea coast, uh, towards Gaza, uh, into the Philistine country. And uh, as he was walking on that desolate road, the spirit told Philip, hey, go out to that chariot. And there was a chariot coming on the road. Go up to that chariot and stay near it. And I'm reading from Acts 8, 29 and verse 30. Go to that chariot, the Holy Spirit says to Philip. Stay near it. And then it says in verse 30, and I love this in the English Bible. It doesn't say this in the Swedish, but it says, mm -hmm. then Philip ran up to the chariot. And that should be your response. Not walking. When the Holy Spirit speaks, you run. You don't need to know everything uh, because he is in lead right? He knows better than you. So he ran up to the chariot and this ended up with actually him being invited up into the chariot. There was an Ethiopian Enoch, a treasurer of the queen, and he led him to Jesus through the scroll of Isaiah and a prophecy there, Messianic prophecy. And he ended up baptizing this guy after prayed salvation prayer with him just next to the road. And then Philip was taken away by the Holy Spirit. It's a fascinating story about how the volume is cranked up and how it goes faster and faster and how there actually is an acceleration in following the Holy Spirit. In chapter 10, verse 1920, we read about Apostle Peter on the rooftop of Simon the Tanner's house. Uh, this letter worker has invited Peter to be a guest at his home. And he prays on the rooftop at about noontime. 
and he falls into a trance and he sees a vision. You see, it begins with visions. Uh, but he doesn't fully understand the vision. It's this big sheet coming down from heaven with unclean animals and a voice tells him to slaughter and eat. And he says, I've never touched anything like that. He's a kosher Jew, right? But the Holy Spirit tells him, do you, do, don't you dare to call anything unclean that I've declared clean. And he's referring back to the cross when Jesus declared all people clean. Hallelujah. Salvation was done there. Um, and uh, I, I'd like to take you into this because there, were, there was another guy in Caesarea, uh, a certain Cornelius, a soldier that had met an angel, and he had sent people to fetch Peter because that's what the angel had, had told him. And these three guys are now at the door, right when Peter has had this vision. And the Holy Spirit speaks again, verse 1920 in, in Acts 10, and says, while Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit with a big S said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. So get up and go downstairs and do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Can you see that? Do not hesitate. Obey fast. Mm -hmm. and the faster you obey, the clearer you will hear the voice of the spirit. And he follows the guys and they come to the house of Cornelius. And there the Holy Spirit falls upon the first group of Gentiles, right? And these Italians and heathens, <laughs> idol worshippers, receive the Holy Spirit are being baptized in water, and the first Gentile church comes about. And it's wonderful to hear the voice of the Spirit. I never forget when I was in my car and I was led by the Holy Spirit like a GPS to a house where I saved a woman from committing suicide. I actually went in through the garage door. <laughs> Uh, because the Holy Spirit told me, I went through a hallway, I opened up the door, and right there was a woman that was just about to commit suicide. And I crawled up on all four and said, don't hurt yourself, because God spoke to me in the car, and I came. And she threw up her hands in the air and screamed, God is real, God exists, mm -hmm. because she's been praying that prayer, if you're real, God, you can send someone to me right now. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit wants to guide you this way. And the more sensitive you become to the Holy Spirit. I mean, my life is like this. I get on an airplane when the Holy Spirit speaks to me. I call a president when the Holy Spirit speaks to me. This is not just fairy tales or good stories. This is how I've lived my life for 30 years. And I'd like all of us SOS people to be Holy Spirit followers. So be a fast obeyer, please. Mm -hmm. Number five, he's so much smarter than you. That might sound a little silly when you hear it at first. Yes, of course he is. No, but listen up now. He's so much smarter than you. And he will make you look so much better than you really are if you allow him to. He wants to make you a happy gold striker. Have you ever played soccer with a five-year-old? You're in a big team and there's the five-year-old that have joined in. and You do all the dribbling and all the hard work. And then when you are just in front of the goal, you hand over the ball to the five-year-old and he gets it into the goal and He's Slatan Ibrahimovic for one day, right? So the Holy Spirit is just like that. He does all the dribbling and all the hard work. And then he just hands over the ball to you. That's how I feel when I stand on the festival platforms. When I see the tens of thousands coming to the Lord and the blind seeing and the deaf hearing, I feel like I'm the five-year-old and he's playing soccer with me and he's mm -hmm. handing over the ball to me and I strike the goal and I cry and I, mm -hmm. and I shine and I look so much better than I really am. Some of you think that I'm a man of God, but ask my wife. <laughs> I, I know what a fragile man I am and how many weaknesses I have and how much he's making up for me and how, how much he's covering me and how, how, how much better he makes me look all the time. And in the book of Acts chapter 16, you can see how the Holy Spirit shut doors, uh, shut doors again. If you're praying about something right now that you're not receiving, listen to me. It might be the Holy Spirit saving you from something that you should not have because it isn't good for you. Or it might be the Holy Spirit leading you to something that is so much better than what you think you should have. You see, he's good. He leads us from glory to glory. So if there is a shot heaven for you and you don't receive an answer of prayer, believe that he's smarter than you. He's bigger than you. And he's so good. I've seen that in my life all the time. When 
God opens up greater doors all the time if I follow him. I always like to say this, uh, when I dance with a girl that dances better than me, she can make me look like a good dancer too. And the Holy Spirit wants to invite you up to dance. Mm -hmm. He likes you to look like an amazing dancer. And I feel like that the Holy Spirit is telling me all the time, why don't you get up on the dance floor, Johannes? Let me lead and you follow. And uh, people tell me I'm a good dancer and I'm not talking about dancing now, I'm talking about evangelism, talking about church planting, talking about being a missionary. Well, I'm not as good as you think. Uh, he makes me look good. Number six, test everything according to the Bible. It's very important when we speak about following the Holy Spirit because people can get off into all kinds of revelations, right? You know, the Book of Mormons, right? Right? <laughs> Come on. Mormonism comes from someone that thought he met an angel. We could talk about Islam uh, with Muhammad, who started hearing voices. Um, a lot of bad things have come from people listening to voices that are not in line with the already 66 books that we have in the Bible. You see, God has already spoken to us, and he's not going to, to violate his word. What he has already said, he's not changing. And he, uh, he's not confused. He's not going to contradict himself in the written down word by speaking to you. I once heard a woman say to me, well, the Holy Spirit has just told me I should marry this Hindu. It was a Christian woman. I said, no, the Holy Spirit has not said that. And she, she was very offended. How can you say that? Well, because 2 Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, do not yoke yourself with unbelievers and so on. And what does a demon temple have to do with a temple of the holy spirit and and she said yeah but the god has told me that no he would not speak against his own word god doesn't speak against his own word you got to hold on to the bible first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 19 to 22 says this do not quench the holy spirit do not treat prophecies with contempt this is paul but test them all test them all Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. Paul is saying this to the church because obviously there were prophecies that were not in line with the revelation. That was not in line with the Holy Spirit. That was not in line. So, hey, when people prophesy, you're going to have the Bible right here. Okay. All right. Okay. If someone says I have a word, okay, can I find it in in this book or, or 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 do i have a confirmation has he already spoken to me about it uh hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says for the word of god is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword and it penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit joints and marrow and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart you see only the word of god can divide between your intellect your will right your emotions and what the holy spirit says in your spirit so the whole when, when you are a diligent bible reader read the bible every day be fill yourself up with the word of god because this is the will of god this is his word already spoken to us and when we are in line with the word of god we can then determine what is the Holy Spirit and what is not the Holy Spirit? So make sure that when you follow the Holy Spirit, you will have the Bible. You know, hold, hold on to the Bible. Hold firm on to the Bible and test everything according to God's word. Number seven, train and exercise your spirit. And I'm returning to the human spirit again. Uh, you, the real you, the innermost you. Um, you can train that part. You know, a lot of us, we go to the universities, we read a lot of books, we do our Sudoku, we do this and that to train our human brain capacity, right? But that's the soul. That's soul training, soul exercise. Nothing bad about that. You should have a sharp soul, an arrested soul, and a healthy soul. But we forget about the spirit. We are spirit first. Mm. We are spirit first. 
Don't be so, uh, what should we say, soul conscious, be spirit conscious. And to train and exercise your spirit, you can only do by two things. Eat right. And um, what is your faith food? The word of God again. Um, Matthew's gospel, chapter four, we're coming to the second, but the first one is eat right. Uh, Matthew 4.4, 4, when Jesus was in the desert, tempted by the devil, he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And he's here quoting Deuteronomy, right? Hey, every time the devil uh, tempted Jesus, spoke, he defended himself with the word. With the sword of the spirit, Ephesians 6, right? With a, with a double-edged sword, Hebrews 4. He, 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 he defended himself with the word. And he said, hey, my food comes out of the mouth of God. This was when the devil asked him to uh, ask the stones to become bread. Um, so we got to eat the word of God daily. Eat it, eat it, eat it. And your spirit, you see... Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm so much bigger on my inside than I am on my outside. <laughs> huh? Did you hear that? And, and you, you see, your heart knows things that your head don't know, Kenneth Hagin said. So you need to be someone that has a, a strong giant on your inside. Your spirit can become a giant, not just your soul, huh? not just your body. Some of us love to train and work out our bodies. I see Camilo on the screen. I see Walter. And, you know, okay. Exercise your body is good to some degree, but exercising your spirit, I'm telling you guys, that's something completely different. And we need to put our emphasis on the spirit. In Romans chapter eight, we read about the second way to exercise our spirit and train our spirit. And that is to pray in the spirit. We could say pray in tongues. Uh, Romans 8, 26, 27 says, in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. He's our helper, right? When we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself then steps in, intercedes for us through wordless groans. Wordless groans. It's the closest you can get to speaking in tongues, right? Wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts. Did you see hearts? He who searches our hearts, our spirits, knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So you see, I, I want to give you this now. If you want to have a sensitive spirit, read the word of God, pray in tongues. First Corinthians 14, four says, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Did you hear that? If you want to build up your inner man, pray in tongues. I practice this a lot. I love to pray in tongues. Sometimes I'm praying tongues several hours during a day. Uh, I do it when I drive my car. I do it when I clean my house. I, you know, I do it when I'm at the gym. If I'm working out myself underneath my breath, I pray in tongues. Because the more I pray in tongues, the more sensitive I become to the Holy Spirit. I build myself up what the weight does to you in the gym for your body. The speaking in tongues does to your inner man and your spirit. The champ on your inside. Mm. Come on, somebody. Jude, verse 20, says, but you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy mm. Spirit, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Sometimes when I walk into a stadium or to a mass festival, I kneel down at a little toilet somewhere just nearby and I cry out to God and I pray to God. And I am vulnerable before him and I pray in tongues and I ask him for help. And every time I step up to preach, I feel like a giant, not on my outside, but on my inside. Mm -hmm. You can be gigantic on your inside if you eat the word of God and you pray in tongues. We'll come to point number eight tonight. Point number eight is God always leads us in peace. He's a good shepherd. <laughs> When I say this, I'm about to cry. Listen, there are so many prophecies that makes us worried. If you are online and you read about all the things that are said, you know, all the nonsense that I said right now, all the things that are being prophesied and spoken about people, we can get very alarmed. But listen, God doesn't lead us through making us alarmed. And he doesn't lead us by making us afraid. And he doesn't lead us by 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 
by putting fear in our hearts. So every time I hear something that puts fear in my heart, I know it's not God. Because God leads in peace. And I want to say this very clear now. God leads in peace. You all know Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing, David says. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. That's the God I believe in. That's the Holy Spirit I believe in. He refreshes my soul, right? He guides me along the paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Are you hearing me? I will fear no evil. If the Lord is your shepherd, if the Holy Spirit is your guide, you're not in fear. What did Romans tell us when we started out this Bible study? He has not given us a spirit where we are slaves to fear. God doesn't lead with fear. He doesn't lead with coming in, stirring us all up to become afraid. Oh my goodness, the tribulation is coming tomorrow. Oh my goodness, I'm not ready. Oh my goodness, I got, no, no, no. God leads in peace. He guides us in peace to the right things. All right, your rod and your staff comfort me. That's the good shepherd. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Did you hear that? In the presence of my enemies, he wakes a table for me. Huh? You anoint my head with oil and you let my cup overflow. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. Did you hear that? Goodness and love <laughs> will follow me all the days of my life. I heard this preacher once says there was two little dwarfs following him around. Two little dwarfs and he asked them, who are you? One said, I'm goodness. The other one said, I'm love. <laughs> Why are you following me around for? We love to be around you because you're guided by the Holy Spirit. So we love to follow you. It's a silly picture, I know. But in my life, guided by the Holy Spirit, I claim goodness and love all the days of my life. Hallelujah. John's Gospel, chapter 10. Jesus speaks about him being the good shepherd, we being his sheep. And I'm reading from verse 2 to verse 6, and I might just quote a little bit out of this here. But it says, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, right? And then it says, they know his voice. They don't follow a stranger's voice. They run away from a stranger's voice because they are afraid of a stranger's voice. But when the Holy Spirit leads us, he leads us in peace. I never forget when, when I was a young believer, I was going to Bible college. And there was a guy there at Bible college that came up to me during one of our prayer meetings. And he said, I see a big wolf head over your head, uh, but you need to interpret this yourself. And I thought, you moron. That was my first thought. <laughs> you're, you're a crazy person. And I went to my dormitory, to my little room. And I said, Holy Spirit, uh, what is the interpretation of the wolf head? He saw and the Holy Spirit said, Go to bed. Go to bed. That was nonsense. You see, we, we're not led by wolf heads over our heads. We're not led by scary movies or, 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 or stupid things. So you hear me? We are led by his peace. We are led by a good shepherd. We are led by someone that wants to lead us in goodness and love. All right. They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. And I'm still quoting from John's Gospel, chapter 10. And when we come to number nine, I want to take a little time there because there's so much, how should we say, technique uh, taught in the body of Christ. And I hate it. I call it Pentecostal witch doctors or Pentecostal witchcraft. And that is that if you do these seven points or follow these 12 steps, so then you will be successful. Well, witch doctors talk like that, you know, uh, but there are no techniques with God. Every one of us develops an intimacy, our own walk with the Holy Spirit. Some prays early in the morning, some prays late at night, right? Some likes to listen to the Bible in their ears. Some likes to sit and read it. We can do both. Hey, listen. Some likes to speak in tongues for hours. Some others likes to worship for hours. Hey, you got to develop your own walk with the Holy Spirit. We, I can't tell you how to walk with the Holy Spirit. I can just tell you, he is my life. 
Mm. I love him. I want to be with him all the time. And uh, there are no techniques. And that's why I say, don't be fleeced. And I will explain that expression to you. That's my point number nine. Don't be fleeced. Judges 6, 37, we read, look, Gideon said, I will place a wool of fleece on the threshing floor. And if there is dew only on the fleece and, and, and all the ground is dry, then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you said. So Gideon is afraid. He's been called by God to do something. And now he wants to test God by a hit and run method, kind of a lottery. So he's putting a little wool out in front of God. And he says, all right, um, uh, if there is dew on the fleece, but dry ground, I know. Well, God went along with it. He did just what he asked for. And then he said, well, now put the, de the dew on the ground and let the fleece be dry. God went along again because that was the Old Testament. But you are not under the Old Covenant. Listen up now. Old Testament practices like putting out fleeces before God. Well, the last time the people of the new covenant of grace and faith were led by a hit and run method. We could also say casting lot was just before Acts 2 in Acts 1. Huh? Why? <laughs> because they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. The Holy Spirit had not fallen upon them. They were not baptized in the Holy Spirit. They had just been born again by his breeding. John's Gospel, chapter 20, uh, uh, 19, right? Jesus breathed on them. But they had not been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. But after the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the fire fell and tongues of fire sat upon them, they don't cast lot. They didn't use the old priests, uh, Urim and Tumin anymore. They didn't put out fleeces. They were led by the Holy Spirit. You're not under the old covenant. The Holy Spirit came and baptized all the believers in spirit and fire. And from that day on, they were led sovereignly by his spirit. I know we are all human beings, right? I've been sitting at a hunting stand and I've been saying to God like this, I have a big decision to make. If I, if I shoot a deer the next 15 minutes, then I know that I should do this. Some of you have been standing by the highway and you've been saying, if a red car passes here within 30 seconds, then I know you have uh, been speaking to me. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. The devil can send a red car too. <laughs> you see, the devil can allow me to shoot a deer within the first 15 minutes. Don't do that. Listen within. You got the answer within. You got the answer in your spirit. You got the answer in the word of God. So I tell you, don't be fleeced. Did you hear me? Don't follow God in a childish manner, old covenant manner, book of Acts chapter one manner. We got book of Acts chapter two. All right. And that's how we're going to live in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts 126 says they cast lot. Well, that was the last time, right? It's not anymore. It's not for you. Coming to my point number 10. And I want to say something about New Testament prophets. And i got to be sharp now. Are there New Testament prophets? Of course there are. We have Ephesians chapter 4 that is telling us about the five offices, right? The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, right? The shepherd and the teacher. So there are New Testament prophets. But God did not put New Testament prophets in the church to guide us. Did you hear that? That was the old covenant. Then a prophet guided the whole people. No, no, no. Prophets are not in the church of the new covenant to guide us, but rather to confirm what God has already told each and every one of us. Did you hear the difference? So when a prophet comes to town and a prophet preaches in the church, which we would love, we love to receive prophets. But we are not looking for the word of God through the prophets. We are looking for a confirmation of what the Holy Spirit has already spoken to us. I take pity on believers that have a little booklet. And I'm going to speak about that booklet now. You don't like it. Where they write down every little prophecy and every little thing that they've received from people. And they live their lives by that booklet. Don't live your life by that booklet. A prophet can be in the flesh. A prophet can have a bad day. A prophet can say something that God has not said. 
neither in his word or in your spirit, and then you shouldn't live by it. You should follow the Holy Spirit. Mm. So when a prophet prophesies over me, and i got to be honest with you now, I've received some mighty prophecies, mighty, mighty prophecies that I have felt rings in my spirit because they confirm what God has already told me. And sometimes I've received three, four confirmations like that, and I've been walking out strongly and firm because now I've been confirmed, all right? So let me read here. I just wrote this down so that I'm not going to think today. We are all temples of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. So don't allow prophecies to guide you, but instead confirm what you already know deep down in your heart. Every one of us can hear from God and be led by the Holy Spirit. New Testament prophets should warn, encourage, exhort the church, and confirm what we already know in our spirits by the witness, right? through the Holy Spirit. Let's be Holy Spirit led instead of prophets led. And I want to tell all of the SS people, take care, take care. I've heard some say, well, there was a prophet, a mighty man of God who came to our, to our church and he prophesied over me that I would become a big movie star. And now I'm turning 38 and I've not seen anything of it. And, I, and I'm wondering why am I on the wrong road? Where, where have I gone wrong? And I, Never forget, I asked ask this woman, what if God never, ever said that to you? Have you heard that from God yourself? No, but this mighty man of God, you know, he, he did this mighty man of God. Now, hey, have you heard it in your spirit? Do you think God has spoken to you about having a calling, going to Hollywood, becoming a movie? No. Well, then throw that prophecy away, my friend. I've heard people, people that have tried to be pastors, they have tried to, they have tried to, to do all kinds of things because someone prophesied that over them. We can't be a pastor because someone prophesied. We, we, we can't go do what Johannes does in Africa without being suddenly called by the Holy Spirit to do that. When you're called by God, there is a grace for what you do. Are you hearing me? There's a grace. And I'm going to continue to read. God guides then provides his will, his bill. When he has spoken to us, he's going to pay for it. He's going to take care of it. He leads, then feeds. This is his rule of faith. Manna fell from heaven under the old covenant, where the pillar of the cloud and fire went, and there only. If Israel missed God's guiding pillar, they missed breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There is always more than enough if we are in the supernatural hot spot. Have you been standing on a mountain? Somewhere in the wilderness? Huh? Have you been walking around in your house trying to find the hot spot? Listen, there's a hot spot for you. And the hot spot for you is what God has called you to be. The will of God is our home, Reinhard Bonke said. You see, I don't think it's hard to do what I do in Africa. I don't think it's hard to be a daddy to all of our churches. I don't think it's hard to teach in the Bible colleges. I don't think it's hard to sit here tonight. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it because God has called me to it. And he's giving me grace to do it. So if life is just a mystery for you and you don't feel grace and you're not in the hot spot and you're trying to find a signal, hey, listen, there is a hot spot for you. Mm -hmm. There is a place where everything will work for you. There is always more than enough if we are in the supernatural hotspot. You have a grace mm. zone. You have an assignment, mm. a special mission. You see, where he tells you to be, that's where it happens. And I like to say, if we could all just become Holy Spirit led, if we could all just tune our hearts to where we have circumcised hearts and ears, we could end up in that place where manna falls out of the sky, where water comes out of the rock. Come on, somebody. Let me preach to you. There's a place, hallelujah, where you can live in a supernatural hotspot. Let me say this. Someone that is constantly complaining about how hard it is, how, how, how bad the church is. I've heard pastors say, well, uh, you know, 
Oh my goodness, my church. And then they just complain about the church. My, my church can't give, my church can't pray, my church can't do this. Well, uh, I, I always say, brother, sister, I don't think you called for this. Mm. Plain and simple. If life's just a mystery, you're not called for this. Mm. Life should be awesome when we are in a sp mm. supernatural hotspot. Not every day. Come on. Not all the time. But I would say majority. Majority. Mm. There should be an overweight on goodness, not on misery. Every time I've been miserable is when I've ended next to the guiding pillar of God, where I've come out of the hot spot of God, where I'm not in the grace zone, where I'm not doing my assignment or my mission. Then I've become very confused. Then I've started to sin. Then I've started to compromise. Then I've ended up next to the will of God. But in the will of God, there is grace. Manna in Hebrew means, wow, what? That's the Hebrew <laughs> meaning for manna. You know what? Let's live in that hot spot where our lives becomes one big wow. What? Hallelujah. Yesterday mm -hmm. I was talking to a businessman that said he wanted to help us with the next year's festivals. Let me end by that. Mm -hmm. We're planning eight festivals in Africa. Eight festivals. We we, are, we, we were turning up the heat. Mm -hmm. uh, our uh, account is pretty much empty after this year. Mm -hmm. So I said to the Lord, how should I plan? And he answered with something he said to Reinhard Bonke many years ago. He said, plan with what is in my pocket and not with which what is in yours. So uh, I did. I sent Fior and Fernando to talk to committees all over Africa. They are doing that right now. We got zero in our accounts. We've emptied everything. <laughs> and I am not sleepless. I sleep good at night. Mm. You know what? Because if God wants us to do these festivals, he's going to provide for it. He's going to give us every penny for it. And if he doesn't, I'll be hunting for a year. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll be so happy being home with Maria going hunting for a year. You heard me. You heard me. You see, when God has called us to something, he takes care of it. Mm. And then I pray these prayers. I had one businessman call. I had another businessman call. I had another church call asking me, what are you planning next year? And before I knew it, there were so many pledges and so many big donations on the way that I think we're going to be provided mm. for another year. Mm. Let me say to you, my life is a wow life. What? Wow. Mana again. And let me end by this. Some of you may think Johannes is a big man of God. He's not. He's a little boy with a very good reception in the hot spot. Mm -hmm. I trust the Holy Spirit. I don't trust my own integrity. I don't trust my own discipline that's long ago i did that as a young man i trust the holy spirit mm. i trust his grace i trust him oh how much i want to follow him i want to please him i want to finish my race and i want to be where he wants me to be let's lift up our hands and thank god father i pray that we will all have circumcised ears and circumcised hearts Father, fill every room right now. Let your Holy Spirit overwhelm all my viewers and listeners. Mm. Father, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit come upon each and every one that has joined this Zoom Bible study. Mm. Come upon them right now. Touch them right now. Mm. Father, you said through Jesus Christ, come to me, all of you that are carrying heavy burdens, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, you will give us rest and you will let us carry out exactly what you want us to carry out. Holy Spirit, we commit our future to you. Holy Spirit, we want to say like Samuel right now, speak for your servant is listening. Speak to us. 
cut our ears open, circumcise our hearts. We want to be sensitive to you. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Rakarabalama shakarabalama hasakenji. Bless each and every Bible study participant today. In Jesus' mm. name. Amen. Mm. Thank you so much for joining me for this hour of Bible study. Thank you for putting up with all my bad jokes and mm -hmm. who I am. I love you so much. It is a true privilege and a true honor to be an apostolic father to this movement. Mm -hmm. I love you guys so much. May we all expand and grow and multiply in God. huh? Mm -hmm. And let us all be more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank you. We say Lala Salama to East Africa. We say good night, gute Nacht, und so weiter. Bye-bye.